Hey everybody, what's going on? How are you? Josh over at Fuado Unmanned Systems in Tampa, Florida. Hope everybody's doing well today. Here at Fuado Unmanned Systems, we're a drone dealer. So we offer custom built solutions and custom accessories. We also offer DJI products. We also offer training and we offer rental aircraft. Today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys about DJI Thermal Analysis Tool 3.0. The video is gonna show you how to create professional deliverables for your customer. It's really important after you capture your data to make sure that it's in a format that is easily understandable for your customer to under see and understand. T -t -t Today, Junior! Now keep in mind, this video is only for supported DJI products like the DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, the Matrice 300 equipped with an, a Zenmuse H20N or an H20T camera. The Matrice 30T is also another aircraft that's supported. If you have one of these aircraft, it'll work for you. If you have a FLIR equipped aircraft or a FLIR sensor, this video won't apply to you. And again, guys, this is just a quick video demonstration on how to create professional deliverables for your customers. If you have any questions about additional training or if you want some formal thermal training, please contact us. Let's go ahead and head into the classroom. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and get started. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to, to DJI.com. And then once you get to DJI.com, we're gonna go to the support menu, and then you're gonna scroll over to downloads. Once you're at the uh, top downloads page, you're gonna click on software. And after software, you're gonna click on DJI Thermal Analysis Tool. And then click on DJI Thermal Analysis Tool 3.0. This is the latest version of DJI's thermal analysis tool and it works great. They've had some issues with the ones in the past, but this one works awesome. So you're gonna go ahead and install the executable file. So just click here, uh, you'll download it and then go ahead and install the program. Uh, once it's installed, uh, you'll be able to you know, get into it. I've already installed it, so I'm gonna go ahead and just go right into the app and uh, go from there. All right, guys, and once you have it downloaded, you're going to go ahead and open up the application. And then here is your main user interface. This is what's going to allow you to create awesome deliverables and get them to your customer in a professional format. So first thing we need to do is go over here and click on the settings icon. This is going to be some initial setup that you're going to do. So first thing, obviously, English. Uh, we're going to be doing the English language, the unit in the United States. We use Fahrenheit, so we're going to go ahead and select that. And then under report, this allows you to change the logo, which is helpful when you're generating your report. Once you're happy with all that, go ahead and hit save. And once you have the initial setup all done, you're gonna go ahead and start with the add folder button. This is where you'll go onto your computer and find the folder that you imported all of your pictures into. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. Alrighty guys, now that we have added our folder, you'll see that it's under the my folder section. Also, uh, you'll notice the date down here. This displays the imported images by date, so it allows you to filter out the images taken on certain dates pretty easily, which is really nice. Just another navigation tool. But we're gonna go ahead and click on the My Folder, Thermal Shots, and that's gonna show all the pictures that we have in that folder. And now we can go ahead and move forward. If we click on the image itself, the image display area, with will change and we'll have some information over here which will show you how to change these parameters and then also just your image info which is the mavic 2 enterprise advance is the aircraft that we're using the focal length of the camera aperture uh, resolution of the photo the date it was created and the date it was modified all righty guys so we're going to go ahead and click on one of these photos and we're going to go through the uh, thermal analysis screen and kind of talk about all of its features and everything we're not going to get too detailed into it but we're definitely going to show you what you need to know so that you can create a thermal report so let's go ahead and get started so we're going to double click on our image and that is going to bring us into the thermal analysis screen now of course you got your image display area where you got your image right here and then also you have the name of your image the date and the time when your image was taken then we got our toolbar so let's talk about the toolbar so the toolbar has a couple of helpful tools that you're definitely going to be using so the first one is going to be your spot temperature use the spot temperature to get a specific temperature off of your object. So for example, we'll click right here and now we have 87.8 degrees Fahrenheit. The next one is gonna be your rectangle temperature. 
If you want to do a analysis of a roof or something like that, this tool is very helpful. What it does is allows you to draw a rectangle around the area that you want to analyze. And then it's going to give you the average uh, temperature, the minimum temperature, and the max temperature, which is great for roof analysis and uh, other objects. Let's go ahead and move on to the circle temperature. Circle temperature allows you to draw a circle around the area that you want to get a temperature from. And then again, it'll give you the average, uh, the max, and the minimum value. The next one is going to be line temperature, where we're able to draw a line on our object and pull a minimum and maximum and average temperature from that object. The next one is going to be our color palettes. Let's say you don't like the color palette that you took the image in. You can go ahead and change that in post. Um, which is very helpful if you accidentally shot it in the wrong color palette or if you want to analyze the image from a different color palette's perspective. The last icon over here is our resize. We can go ahead and change this to the original size or we can click at the fit window. Fit window seems to be pretty okay. Now, one thing you guys may have noticed is our data is kind of bunched up and it's hard to see, which happens when you're putting a lot of data onto one image. If that is a problem, you can go ahead and right click on your selected area and then go ahead and go to location where you're able to hide the data, center it, make it, move it to the left or move it to the right. So let's go ahead and move this one to the left. That way we can actually see what's going on with that one. Our circle over here, we'll go ahead and click it, right click, and then let's go ahead and move that to the left as, as well. That way we can see that data a lot easier, which is gonna be real helpful for your clients. Also, you may have noticed that over here in the measurement section, as we continue to annotate our image, it's adding our measurements over here, uh, giving us, you know, SP1, which is our spot value, SQ1, which is our square one over here, R1, which is our uh, circle, and then L1, which is going to be our line right here. And it's going to give us our minimum, average, and maximum temperatures of those objects. And the next thing we're going to talk about is the chroma bar, which is this right here. By dragging the two ends of the chroma bar, you're able to adjust the color scale of the pseudo color and you're able to highlight objects in a specific temperature range. So by grabbing and going down with that or going up with that, we can change the temperatures that we're seeing. And that's the chroma bar. So now we're going to talk about this over here all the way to the right, which is our information bar. And the information bar contains a preview of the image. It's going to t contain our measurements. Um, it's also going to contain our parameters that we set for the image, uh, the image info, and then any annotations or remarks that we put into the image. So let's talk more about this image information bar. So the first thing we have are our measurements, which again, these are the measurements that we just put onto our image. And as you see, you know, SP1, 87.8 degrees. So 87.8 degrees, we're only gonna have one value there. But then for our square one, we're gonna have a minimum average and a maximum value, which is this is our square over here. Uh, our R1, which is gonna be our circle, uh, minimum, average max and then our line minimum average and max so awesome you know little bar over here to show you all your data nice and clean the next thing is going to be the most important part which is our parameter section all these parameters affect your measurements so it's important to make sure that these are as accurate as possible so let's go ahead and start off with distance which is the distance to the target so we're about 40 feet away from this water tower when we're doing the inspection so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and change this from five meters to our actual uh, distance which was about 40 feet which is roughly let's just say like 12.2 meters and watch our temperature change when that happens bam so our little spot value went from 87 to 88 degrees so distance does affect your measurement so very important to make sure that's correct the next one is going to be relative humidity this one's pretty easy. You just need to record the humidity levels that you're at on that day and go ahead and plug that parameter in just to make sure your data is a little more accurate. This one doesn't affect things as much, but uh, it's still important to try and get it as accurate as possible. Emissivity. This one is very important. And this is how strongly the target surface is emitting 
energy as thermal radiation. Um, so essentially, you need to know what the emissivity is for the object that you're scanning or inspecting. We have a little cheat sheet here at our training class and it's provided to you during training. There's also a lot of good online resources to help you with that information. So make sure that your emissivity values are correct. Watch how the temperature changes when we change the emissivity value. So let's go ahead and change it to 0 0.60 and hit enter. And then bam, our object just bumped up to 91.6 from 88 degrees. Uh, we're gonna change it back to the emissivity that it's closer to and hit enter and bam, back to 88 degrees. All right, so next is reflected temperatures. So if you're viewing a highly polished metal object with like low emissivity, the surface will act like a mirror. So instead of measuring the temperature of the object itself, your camera will instead detect reflected temperatures. And reflected temperatures are, are known as background temperatures. It's any thermal radiation originating from other objects that reflect off the target. Uh, so like, you know, the sun beating down on your object. Um, since there are no uh, objects with extreme or high low temperatures uh, nearby in this photo, we're gonna go ahead and set this parameter as the ambient temperature. Um, so the ambient temperature on that day was around 87 degrees. So again, we're just gonna go ahead and leave that parameter like that. Um, just something to note. Guys, but please keep in mind that reflected temperature configurations could affect the measurement uh, results. So the bigger the difference uh, between the reading and the ambient temperature, the bigger the impact. So make sure that this is as accurate as can be because it will affect your data. So let's continue image info. Um, so we got the model of the aircraft that we're using, the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advance, the focal length, which is 8.9 millimeters, and then the aperture, the resolution of the photo, the date the photo was taken, and then the date the photo was modified. Also, you're allowed to put annotations. So for example, if we want to put the spot, so we'll put SP1 and then that value top of tower. And we're able to annotate our uh, report a little bit just to add more info. And then, of course, if we need to add any remarks to the info, we can add remarks. We'll just go ahead and put this as a test just so you guys can see what it looks like when it generates a report. After you're happy with all the information that you've put in your info bar, um, you're going to go ahead and hit the save button and that will save your data and make sure that everything here doesn't get lost when you move on to your next photo. And then by clicking this little arrow down here, you can move on to your next image. And then again, you'll plug in your parameters, you have your image info, any annotations and remarks you wanna put. And I've already shown you guys how to do that. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to our first image. And now we're gonna go ahead and show you guys how to export this image. So the first thing that we're gonna do is go to the bottom right of the page and click on export. And once you click on export, it's going to bring you to this interface where you are already presented with a very nice report of a single object. And if you wanted to, you can go ahead and export this report as a PDF right now. You may want to go ahead and change the header of your uh, report. So let's go ahead and change this to, let's just say, South Tower. That way our report looks a little nicer, a little more detailed. We can add any other additional information there if we need to. And then we can go ahead and hit export report as PDF. Once we export the report, we're going to go ahead and save it uh, under a name. So this one we just named DJI Test Thermal Report. And uh, bam, now we have a nice PDF report that got generated for us automatically. And we can present this to our customer as a deliverable. The export PDF option is great for just busting out a report real quick uh, on a single object. Really helpful and very little effort that goes into that. But let's say we want to turn out a more professional report uh, or we have multiple objects that we're doing uh, thermal inspections on and we need to put all of those into one report. You're going to want to hit the export report doc um, over here. That way you can export it in a doc format uh, so you can open this up in Word and manipulate your report so that you can have multiple items on one single report. I'm going to show you guys an example of that. So I've exported the report as a doc and now I've opened it up with Microsoft Word and here it is inside of Microsoft Word. And from here I'm able to you know add text make any adjustments that I need to. But we wanna add more data to this report. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to DJI analysis tool and do another photo and then add it to this exact same report. So we're gonna go back to our library and thermal analysis tool. We're gonna click on another image. We're gonna annotate our 
image accordingly. We're gonna adjust our parameters as needed. We'll just make that small adjustment for now. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit save and export. Export report as doc. We'll give it a uh, name DJI thermal uh, doc test two. Not sure if you guys can see that. And then we'll go view our doc. All right, so after you export that second doc, you're gonna go find it, open it up with Word. You're gonna copy, highlight everything, make sure that everything gets highlighted. Copy. You're gonna to go to your other Word document with your first report on it. You're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom of that page and you're gonna get hit enter and then you're gonna hit control V, which will paste all your information into your first report. And now you have two different images on one report. And just like that, guys, you have now generated a thermal report that has multiple pieces of information on it uh, with all your parameters, uh, your measurements that you pulled, the image info, and any annotations that you made on the image. And this can now be saved as a PDF and then sent to your customer in a very professional format that is going to make you look good and make your customer happy because this is easy to read and analyze. All right, and back over to the DJI analysis tool. Now, if for our last option, we can export image, which is just gonna export this image only. This is helpful if you already have some sort of uh, report software and you just need the image, or if you just wanna export the image, it's perfect for that. So go ahead and uh, click on that and it'll export it as an image for you that where you can share it easily. All right, everybody, and that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and close this and we're gonna go back to the library. This is how you generate thermal deliverables for your customer. It's very easy to do. Uh, the most important thing is to make sure that you have your parameters plugged in properly. But by doing this, you will be able to make professional reports for your thermal inspections and your customers will be pretty satisfied with the uh, data that you're giving them. If you have any additional questions or if you wanna learn more about thermal imaging, please feel free to reach out to us, Fuado Unmanned Systems, and we can answer any questions. If you're interested in getting some training, go ahead and go to our website, fuadotechnologygroup.com, and check out our training section where we uh, offer thermal training, FAA training, and private uh, drone trainings as well. Again, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. Other than that, have a great day.